さあ行くぜまず1枚目ドローモンスターカードクイーンズナイトを墓地に捨て魔導戦士ブレーカー追加攻撃二<笑>枚目ドロー<笑>モンスターカード<笑>モンスターカードドロー Hey everybody! Sorry to interrupt your scheduled weevil bullying there. I've been rewatching the Yu-Gi-Oh! series a lot recently. If you remember from my trading card episode, it was definitely my favorite hobby while back in high school. And honestly, I'm kind of a sucker for just sitting there with my cards and binge watching a season here and there. Admittedly, it's been quite a while since I've really gotten the chance to play Yu-Gi-Oh, but I still really enjoy collecting the cards. Recently, I've taken on the masochistic challenge of trying to collect three of each Dark Magician cards in maximum rarity. Whether they're absolute meta bombs, like Red Eyes Renew, or, you know, Dark Sage. <laughs> I love the idea of having this sort of card index for both displaying these glorious cards that span over 20 years of the game, and to be able to build a deck quickly on the fly. But with an archive this vast, we need something unique to both store and transport these cards. And that's where today's project comes in. Behold! The Magic Formula! Or the Book of Secret Arts. Yeah, I just went with a dark magical tome in the end. No doubt pending with a Konami lawsuit. I wanted to customize a folder specifically to show off the Dark Magician archetype and figured why not show how I did it. It's actually a lot easier to build than you might have expected. I've made a list down in the description of everything you're going to need to build a folder like this for yourselves. And I've even put the STL files for the parts we needed to design and print in 3D. Which is a great time to talk about the first step we took to creating this folder. Initially, we had a look online for the Dark Magical Circle to see if there was already any 3D files available to save ourselves some time. But sadly, we had no luck tracking any of these down, so we had to design our own. Once this was complete, it was on to the printing stage, which ran for about 12 hours or so on a filament printer. While it may have printed at a sharper quality if we had printed it on, say, a resin printer, the circle was far too big to actually fit on our resin printing bed. Now, if you don't own a 3D printer, don't sweat it. There are often places like hobby clubs and even some libraries that can print this out for you as long as you have the STL files you need. Again, down in the description. Once the circle is complete and cleaned up a little bit, it's on to painting. For mine, I used a can of Retributor armor to lay down the base, then painted the inside of the circles using Abaddon Black. I went with this order because when you paint metallic colors, sometimes the brush strokes can still leave sort of a visible finish on the product. More so than matte colors. I also took this opportunity to spray the corner protectors so that they match the circle's gold perfectly. Once the paint is dry, we can move on to the next step, preparing the covers. I glue two wooden boards down to our base folder in preparation for the front and back covers. These are pretty standard size and means you shouldn't need to do any additional cutting here. They don't need to go hard against the corners of the cover. They're here purely for the thickness! And so that when the book is opened, it won't flex on the circle that we're about to stick down. We glue these down with two-part epoxy and just give it ample time to dry. Now, once the boards are glued and ready, we want to prepare our leather. This leather we're using we picked up from a horse and saddle place for about 20 bucks or so. But we ended up with a lot more leather than we really needed for this project. Still, a good rule of thumb is to have more than you need, just in case you fuck up. We open the folder out to get the dimensions, measuring about 3 centimeters from each point of the folder's cover and spine, using a pen to mark out the size. We then cut out the shape and begin the drying process. The dyeing process. Using a small sponge, we gently went to dab the dye from corner to corner, not wiping, as that will leave an unnatural pattern on the finished product. Once you've gotten one layer of the dye down, just take a little break. Maybe indulge in watching Weevil suffer just a little bit more. <laughs> you can never feel bad for that guy. Then, once the first layer of dye is done, just repeat. With each layer, you'll find the color gets richer and overall more consistent. 
I ended up doing about three layers before the purple was at a stage that I was happy with. Next up, cutting. We want to cut the ring shape into the letter now before we stick it down onto the folder. Using the circle, we draw out the shape on the back of the leather. Cut the shape out carefully, then we want to also mark the circle onto the wooden board. Don't worry, you won't see any of the wood on the finished product. And now we're just going to start gluing things down. <laughs> we want to use super glue for both the corners of the cover and the rim of the circle here, tracing it nice and close but not directly on the circle we marked on the wood. We apply the glue to the wood rather than the leather so the leather doesn't absorb the glue prematurely. Time is kind of a factor for this, so as soon as we have the glue down, push the leather quickly down onto the wood. Once the leather is in place, either slide the folder into a book press if you have one, or just something heavy over top of the folder to make sure the leather and glue dry nice, flat, and consistently. Once it's dry, we want to do the inner circle for the cover. We measure out the diameter of the design using the circle, then more super glue and leather. Glue it! After which we apply a little pressure to make sure that smaller circle dries completely flat. And now we can finally glue down the magical circle. We decided to go with hot glue for this step, but you could also just use super glue if you don't want to buy three types of glue for this project. I understand, it's more money to spend on cards. FBI, open up! Now with the cover done, we just need to glue down the leather on the back of the folder. Now in retrospect, looking back, this might have been easier to do first rather than doing the cover first, but we wanted to make sure the circle sat perfectly. So if we had to pull it all up and start over again, it would be less of a chore. Once we have the cover and back of the book glued down, we want to start folding the leather inside the cover and spine. A couple quick cuts and more hot glue super glue, and we'll have the leather nicely folded and glued into place. Make sure after you stick down each flap to apply pressure again so it stays as smooth as possible. Don't panic if you slightly miscut the corners either. Getting them perfect is super fiddly, and once we put down the corner protectors, no one's even gonna be able to tell, so no stress. Now we have the leather nicely wrapped and it's starting to look very much like the finished product, but we still have a teeny bit left to go. Inside the covers, we wanna stick down a layer of felt, you can opt to use other materials for this. On most books, in fact, I usually just use cardstock here, but because this is a folder, the felt will do a nice job protecting our front and back pages. We went as hard at the edges of the page as possible with this, gluing it down with hot glue, and just keeping a sheet of baking paper against the folder's pages itself so no glue ends up touching any part of it. No point in making a custom folder if the pages are all faded and naff looking. And finally, the finishing touches. We apply the corner protectors onto the front and back of the book using two-part epoxy. We used small clamps to make sure they bound nice and tight here. Just make sure to keep that baking paper handy and use it while you're waiting on these corner protectors to dry, just to make sure nothing gets on the pages of the folder. One final optional step here we decided to take was to add a spine design to the book. You don't need to add this, but I kind of felt it helped balance the circle out a little bit. If you do decide to add this onto your folder, you don't need any more cutting from the leather or anything like that. Just glue this bad boy directly onto the leather itself. And we're finally done! <laughs> Thank you all for watching this fun little guide. I hope it's helped inspire you to make your own projects. And with that, now I'll let you get back to the, you know, weevil stuff. <laughs>